Well, you probably heard talk about a recession and depending on who you ask, we might be in a recession or we might not be in a recession and really I can't figure out if we're in a recession or not right now because in early August 2022 right now, it seems like there's talk about a recession but we're not really in one or some people think we are in one but I'm not sure myself. All I know is the stock market is continuing to rise on the stocks I own and that's what I've been looking at recently. So I'm going to talk about how I managed to make money in a recession and this may be a recession, this may not be a recession. This is just kind of how I make money on the side along with my current full-time job. So number one is obviously my, my full-time job. I usually work there at least 40 hours a week and um, I think I mentioned this a while back, um, a few, maybe two or three months ago, I was working about 40 to 48 hours a week, depending on if, uh, if one of my machines was running and, and if management had that machine on overtime, then I wouldn't leave at my normal time. I would stay an extra two hours if that machine was running. So then I would make a little bit of extra money and that was, that was nice, but also I work 10 hour shifts four days a week. So staying two extra hours, that makes it a 12 hour shift. And I'm not very fond of those, especially in the winter time when the days are shorter and you just, you know, I want to go home. I don't want to, I don't want to go in at 6 a.m. and leave at 6 p.m. And then I have to go to sleep about, usually about 9 p.m. or 9.30 if I'm pushing it. And if I'm really pushing it, I go to bed at 10 p.m. and then I don't get much sleep. And I, I usually try to be out of bed by 5 a.m. or 5.15 a.m. And then I have to leave my place by about 5.40 a.m. So I'm not rushing. If I want to rush, I can leave by 5.45 a.m. I figured it out. <laughs> I figured it out. Uh, I can get to the highway in maybe five minutes. And I stay on the highway maybe four minutes, five minutes. And then my workplace is right off the highway. So it may be a, maybe a minute or two, maybe three minutes if there's a lot of traffic from the highway is my workplace. So it, it takes me roughly 10 to 15 minutes. And I just, I like to give myself a little extra time. So 20 minutes seems to get me there with no rush. So that's what I do. I, I work at this factory full time and that's how I make a majority of my income to, to support my, my bills. I have bills, I have food to buy, uh, I have gasoline to buy, you know, electricity, water. I live in an apartment, so I have to pay for water and electricity and, and, um, and also included in my rent is a pest fee and, and trash fee. So we have, we have about one, two, we have six dumpsters here at this apartment complex. So that is nice that I can just go, if we, right now we've been using Walmart bags. Um, we've been using those for trash bags because uh, I don't know how my wife feels about it, but I honestly, I don't see any need in buying full size trash bags when we get free Walmart bags from the store and Dollar General and Family Dollar. And um, the only store that we go to that doesn't give grocery bags is Aldi so we we uh, we do go to Walmart for some things so we get Walmart bags and then we go to Aldi for a lot of our groceries and then Walmart you know we get other things that you can't get at Aldi so then we stock up on our bags there so that's where I make most of my money working there and another main form of my income is buying and selling from the stock market because I mean, who loves, I mean, who, who doesn't love free money? I mean, it's not necessarily free, but you're setting, you're setting money aside pretty much in my mind. I'm setting money to the side into savings and then I'm using some of that savings and I'm putting it into the stock market and then you just wait weeks, few months, and then you'll, you can sell it for a higher gain. I mean, 
it might take a few months, it might take a year, or if we fall into a long recession, it might take several years to make your money. But the fact of the matter is that from what I understand, the history of the stock market is always going to go up. It, you're never going to you're never going to lose money unless you just unless it's like a great depression in 1929 and the whole stock market just falls completely apart and then you have to wait decades to get your money back but i just don't see that happening and if it does happen i'm probably going to be in the clear because what i have done is so i i set aside money every month for savings and and before I got married, I was scrimping. Is that the right word? Scrim is that a word? I don't know. I was very, um, very tight with my money. And I was putting a lot of money aside for savings. And mainly for a house and a car and things like that. And, and just have, I already have an emergency fund, you know, for things that just come up. Like, like we had um, my wife's... Um, my wife's car tax and all that stuff getting switched over she had to pay about five hundred dollars for that so that was unforeseen expense and anyway we have savings set aside for that and what I did was I took a small portion of that savings and it really doesn't take long to build this up if you have a, a good paying job I mean just a, a regular that's what I, I mean I just have a regular old job and I just was being very frugal and I didn't go out to eat a lot I didn't spend a bunch on food or I didn't spend a bunch on entertainment because I, I was saving a lot of money and and I took a little bit of that money each month and, and you can do this if you just live frugally for a few months you can set aside a thousand a month and and just put it into your stock fund or or set aside a thousand a month or whatever it is just using that for an example you can set aside a hundred a month or five hundred a month depending on what what expenses you have and 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 i'm not i'm not sure it, if you're not able to set aside much then maybe this isn't a great idea but but i would say most people who who have decent jobs and and don't have a whole lot of expenses. For those of you with with several children, it might be more difficult, and um, and, and I, I wouldn't recommend it if you can't pay your own bills or pay your credit card. Like I pay my credit card off every month. I don't let the interest build up on there because that just seems like a waste of money to me, unless I just can't afford it. But I have been blessed with a, a good job and. And I've been able to pay all my bills and and so this stock market is just an extra form of income to help me save some money and and use it to go out to eat every once in a while or whatever we want to do so it doesn't it doesn't take much sacrifice in in my life to to set aside just a little bit of money a month and then put it into the stock market and then I have a few thousand built up after a couple of years, you know, I, I, I just made $75 this morning. I, I was, I had bought this stock a while back and, and I have a few stocks that I invest in. And then usually what I'll do is I'll buy a large amount of shares of stocks and then I'll, I'll wait a few weeks or months and just, and see. And right now in the beginning of August, 2022, the stocks have been going back up and especially Ford, which is how I made some money on this morning, it, it had about a 20% surge upward, which was pretty interesting because it has been going down. I mean, several stocks have been going down the last couple months anyway, but Ford especially has bounced back up. And so I sold out of it everything I had this morning. And and it doesn't it doesn't take a whole lot of money I mean you could get started with five dollars and just start investing now I don't know how much five dollars is gonna get you you know you're not gonna make a fortune on that but if you start putting aside money and and getting it saved up built up 
before you invest. I mean, I think if you invest $2,000, $3,000 into one stock, that's when you're going to make more money per se than just putting $10 into one stock. Unless the stock surges upward, I, I just don't see you making but maybe a dollar or two here and there. And, and that's, that's what I've been doing. I've just been putting uh, about a couple thousand into each stock. And, and I've been doing this for, I don't know how long, a few years. I, I, started, I started with a smaller amount and I've just been building up my, my savings and putting it into stocks. And, and I do I do study the stocks and I, I, I like before I bought into any of these shares into any of these stocks that I I bought into I was looking at the history like um, is this the highest it's been in ten years or uh, if so I don't want to buy it because if it's the highest that it, that it's ever been especially in the history of the stock, I don't want to buy into it now because it's liable to drop at any second. And, and it, usually what I look for is something that's like gone up and then it's dropped off and I'll buy at the low point. And like Warren Buffett says, you, you buy low and you sell high. You, you just, you don't sell when you lose money. And, and I've been trying to follow that. I don't think I've ever sold any stock for less than I bought it for. And because of that, I've just continued to increase my money. And especially, I look at the dividends of stocks. I mean, Ford pays a pretty decent dividend. I, I've been getting, um, I forget what it was, 10 or $15 or probably more than that. Every, um, I believe Ford pays every three months. So I get a decent, it's not, uh, it's not a whole lot of money, but it's worth it to own the stock and then you wait till the stock goes up and you sell it for a profit. And I was talking to my tax lady about this. I go to the same person every year and, and I asked her, I said, so, so what is it that I have to do to, to file my taxes when I'm selling and buying and selling stocks throughout the year? And she said, oh, she said, I have people that bring in stacks of papers with all these stocks that they bought and sold all year long. And then she'll put them in for me. So I said, well, I, I tried to do it on TurboTax one year, and <laughs> thankfully I had only I had only bought and sold in large amounts, so I only had like two or three buying and selling times. So I had to put those in, and it was a headache for me trying to, because I don't do that every day. My tax lady does it all the time, so she knows all the laws and everything. So. In the future, I'm probably just going to give it to her and let her do it because she knows how to do it legally and and the right way. I don't want to mess my taxes up and then uh, inadvertently, probably. I mean, I would. I hope I wouldn't be doing it uh, knowingly, but I would probably inadvertently commit tax fraud or something, and and then I'd be in a whole mess of trouble and. And I, I hope I haven't done that in the past couple of years because um, I think it was two years ago or maybe it was three years ago. I can't remember what year it was. I, I used TurboTax and if you buy and sell stocks, TurboTax is not very fun to deal with. And honestly, they, they charge me a bunch of fees. Now, if you, if you just have a regular job and you don't mess with stocks or any, any of this extra stuff, then TurboTax is great because they don't charge you fees for a simple tax return. But if you have a complicated tax return, I'm probably just gonna take it somewhere and have them do it. And, and especially my tax lady, she does it right in front of me. So I, I can sit there for 30 minutes or an hour, however long it takes her. And then she charges me a couple hundred dollars or maybe $300 to do it. I can't remember how much she charged me last time. But it's worth it to me just to go ahead and get it done right there. And then she gives me my papers back and um, she might have had to mail me something. I don't remember exactly how they did it or they might have emailed it through electronic communication. But that, that's how I have been making a little bit of money through stocks. And of course, my high yield savings accounts, that's another form of income. And, and with the Fed increasing the, the interest rates, it has been great for my savings account. Now, as far as loans go, it's not great for that, but 
I've been making a few dollars or I don't know, $10, $15 a month just off of interest. Uh, uh, that might not be exactly accurate, but that's usually what I make every month uh, just on my savings accounts and and obviously saving up for a house. We have some money set aside for that and, and saving up for cars and uh, stuff in the future and, and like I said, emergency funds and uh, we, we do have we do have a, an emergency fund, house fund, car fund, and there was something else that I was specifically saving for, but I, I took that out. I don't remember what it was now because I haven't used that account in a while, but I took that money out and put it into a car fund and I was just trying to save up. Now, well, we really put a lot of stuff into the house fund because we're trying to get set, things set aside for a house and um, I, I know we, we've been looking at house prices and it's still not looking too great, but I don't know if we're gonna buy a house this next year or the year after, or we might just see how it goes, especially if we fall into a recession. We might be better off um, trying to buy in a recession because if the house prices drop and, and I still have my job, then we can afford it. I mean, um, I'd love to pay my house off in 15 years like, like Dave Ramsey recommends, but I just don't know if that'll be plausible with, with the, the, the sizable income that I have. And we're trying to live off of my income. I'm not sure if I've said this in a video. And, and then Kelsey, my wife, is um, <clears throat> right now we're trying to save her money, her income, and then live off of my income. And it's been pretty tight lately. And we were using some last month. We were just experimenting with, with what we were, what we would do with our finances. So, so we didn't put all of her income into savings last month. But this month we're trying to do that exact thing. And I'm not sure how it's going to work out because it's uh, it's pretty tight so far. And but with gas gas prices are going down, so we're only going to be spending maybe fifty to a hundred dollars a week on gas. And uh, then we got to spend maybe about, well, we, we can make it, I think, you know, on $50 a week for food, but it's, it's pretty tight. I mean, uh, food, isn't, food isn't free, so um, it's, been, it's been pretty tight on the food side of things, and we're trying to uh, save our money where we can, but it's difficult especially with limited incomes. And, and that's why I also, uh, I, sometimes we deliver door dashes. That's another form of income that I have. And usually what I'll do is I'll wait around at McDonald's or, or somewhere in town. And usually a lot of door dashes come from McDonald's. So McDonald's seems to be a good place, at least in my area. Um, people order from McDonald's and then it comes up on my screen and I just, I click accept. And usually I wait about five or six dollars. I want to get paid. Some of those orders they'll pay you two or three dollars, and I say, oh, you know, driving two, three miles, it's not worth it for two or three dollars. So what I, I, I have done, I usually try to get about five or six dollars, and sometimes seven or eight dollars, and and I've gotten a few that are ten dollars, and those are usually Walmart orders that I've gotten. I don't know about other people and of course my 401k is still making money now with the stock market it kind of depends and um, and I also this is supposed to be more about making money in a recession or um, or how I how I go about making money in a recession or a future recession and um, and I would say credit card rewards I'm we can put our rent on our credit card. That that's that's amazing for rewards on your credit card. I mean, several hundred dollars a month, just one bill you can put on your credit card, and then you make whatever percentage back. Capital One has a great travel rewards credit card that we have. I, I got it specifically for travel rewards, and I put it on automatic payment every month, so that way it never. I never get a late fee. I never get charged any fees. I just reap the rewards. I think that's called credit card churning. I don't think that's illegal. 
I, I'm, I've been doing it and nobody stopped me. So that, that is another great way of income. Just make sure you don't charge more than you have. I mean, y'all don't go out there and go on a shopping spree, okay? I mean, be smart about it. I mean, it is your money, so I mean, I guess you can do whatever you want to, but I'm, you're not gonna catch me out, hopefully, going on some shopping spree with no budget in mind. I like to use cash when I'm out in public. And lastly, let's see, I wrote these notes earlier. <laughs> My Roth IRA, that is another thing. That's not been doing too great with the stock market lately and my 401k is not doing excellent either. And then lastly, my, my jobs that you can do. I don't do too many jobs um, outside of the apartment. Like I'm talking about like mowing grass or, or washing windows or, or whatnot. And I think when we do buy a house eventually, I wanna buy a lawnmower. And if I can get people in my neighborhood or, or people nearby in my town, if I can get a few customers to let me mow their yard for say $25, $30, that's not bad. I mean, going once a week to mow their yard and weed eat, I mean, I, I might charge a little more for weed eating because I, I get so worn out when I'm weed eating anyway. But those are, those are just some thoughts I had as well as how, I'm, how I've been making money here lately and as we possibly head into a, a recession, I, I am planning to continue in the stock market because that has been a great, I mean, you can make some easy money. You might have to wait a while, but you can make some easy money in the stock market. You just earn, I mean, you just use your full-time job. You, you set aside some money and put it in the stock market and you watch it grow. I mean, you know, like I said, it might take two or three years. It might take two or three weeks. You just don't really know, but the, the history tells us, the history of the stock market tells us that you will, will make your money back eventually. And, and I don't have my entire savings in the stock market for, for that specific reason, because I don't want to lose my entire savings. I only have a, a small portion set aside to put into the stock market. And, and I, at this rate, I'm not going to lose a, a fortune. I'm not going to bankrupt myself. And that, that's only something that, that somebody, in my mind, somebody crazy would only do. But hopefully, hopefully nobody would put their entire savings into the stock market in hopes that it would increase by two or three times because that could work for you, but that could also lead to a, a lot of headaches. I mean, if you put your entire life savings, that is a very, that, that's a very scary thing to do. And, and I, I don't, I don't see myself doing that, but the main things I do are work a full-time job, put money in the stock market, use my high yield savings accounts and deliver door dashes from time to time and do other things and make a little bit of money here and there. 